Hello, um, I am absent today. So this video is for you guys to go through this math lesson. It's actually a pretty short one. And the problems that we're gonna see are not in the book. Uh, so you're gonna wanna have a whiteboard out and or a notebook, okay? So we are working again with the area model. The area model is also called the box model or box method and can be used for any amount of digits. Okay, so the first problem that I'm going to be giving you this morning is I want you to tell me what are the steps for the area model. And if you can write them out, one step at a time, even better. If you want to be able to explain things in words and you want to be able to explain things in pictures. So if you can do both, that would be great. So I'm going to give you a minute. You can pause this video and on a paper or on a notebook, you're going to want to tell me what are the steps for using the area model if I were to solve 96 times 87. What are the steps? Okay, if you're hearing me now, you should have paused and tried to find the steps. So if I'm talking about the steps, really the very first step that I need to have is that I need to count the number of digits in both factors. Whoops. This time, both have two digits, right? 96 has two digits, 87 has two digits. Based on the digits, I will know how many boxes to draw. I know, based on the digits, I need to draw a box with four squares. Two for the top number, two for the other number. Okay, now if this was a three digit by a two digit, I would draw three boxes on the top and two on the side. So it just depends on how big the number is. Okay, don't worry, I'm going to do this in visuals too, just in case. Then after drawing my four boxes, I will write one factor on the top and one factor on the left side. I will split 96, which would be on the top. It doesn't really matter which one you put on the top versus the side, by the way, but you know, for sake of this, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna split 96, which is my top number, into its place value parts. So, I would have 90 and six, right? I will split 87 into its place value parts, giving me 80 and seven. Finally, I will multiply each of the boxes. I will then add up all of my partial products. The reason it's called partial products is because it's not a whole. Like if something is partial, it means you only have part of it, right? It's not the whole. So these are partial products because they're only chunks of the full product, which would be 96 times 87. But because we split 96 and 87 up, we only have partial parts of the product and that's why we've got to add it all back up so holy moly that's a lot of steps isn't it it is so if i was doing the same thing that i just wrote out in a picture let me show you what it would look like and i go ahead and go to the next slide you'll probably want to do this with me okay so 
in this case, I can actually insert a table. It makes it a lot easier. I'll do a four by four table. All right, now, obviously, it would look a little different if I was drawing this. And my numbers were 96 and 87. So like I said, I, I'm going to put 90 on the top. I'm going to make these a little bigger because, yikes. Ah! Okay, so I split it up into my place value parts, right? 90 goes here because my tens place uh, is always going to be on the left, at least for the top number. Obviously, when we're talking about the uh, side number, it's a little different. So 90 and 6, okay? My tens place is 9. That means that that number 9 stands for 90. The ones place is 6, stands for 6. Okay. The other number was 87. I'm going to put that on my side here, okay, because the other number goes on the left side. Probably should have given myself more room. 80 goes on the top. So the bigger number basically is always in this far uh, left corner for the top number and the top um, when it's coming to the side number. <laughs> I didn't explain that very well. So here's what I'm trying to say. The leftmost box is where your highest place value number goes. And then the top box, when we're looking at the side numbers, is where my highest place value goes. So, you know, if the number was a lot bigger, if it was like thousands, then my thousands would go there. But it isn't, it's small, okay? So, 80 and 7. Now, here's the fun part. I got to do multiplication. Okay? And remember how we were doing this in class yesterday. You basically go and you start with this top number. And you go across and you look up. And if I go across and I look up, that means I've got 80 times 90. Okay? They're basically meeting in the middle. Now that does look like a very difficult problem, but really I can go eight times nine, and then I can add both zeros back. Don't forget, because I have two additional zeros. If I ignore the zeros initially, right? So, because eight times nine is 72, but if I've got to add both zeros back, whoo, that's a big number, 7,200. Okay, but I'm not done. <laughs> now, I'm still working with this 80, I'm going to go all the way across to my empty box. And I'm going to look up. Aha, 6. 80 times 6. So I go across and up. Okay. Across and up. 8 times 6 would be 48. If I add that 0 back, it's 480. Now, why only one zero this time? Well, because the number 6 didn't have 0 in it. Only the 80 did unlike the first uh, factor that we were looking at. Okay, but I'm still not done. I'm gonna change color here. And we're going down to the bottom row. Now I'm dealing with my seven from the 87. Seven, go across, look up, aha, seven times 90. If I do that same thing again, where I ignore the zero for a moment, uh, which I think is probably the easiest method. I go seven times nine. Uh-huh. 63. <gasps> Don't forget to add back that zero. I only got one zero this time. 630. Finally, final box. We do this for each box. We are still on seven. We're going to look across to my empty box. We're going to look up. Aha. Uh -huh. Six. Seven times six. Oh, thank goodness. That's an easy one. Whee! Okay, now. As you may recall, we had this final step because I multiplied all the boxes. And now it says, uh-oh, I've got to add up all my partial products. So I got to add all these guys up, which is quite a large uh, equation. Personally, when you get really high in terms of the place value, in terms of all the different kinds of numbers that you're seeing, I recommend just doing it in parts. So you could do this very easily. You could go 
7,200. And then, uh, like the lady in the video said yesterday, she goes, you know, try to maybe do it in order from biggest to smallest, or greatest to least. So I'm gonna just follow her advice. 7,200 is my biggest number. 630 is my second largest. And I am not gonna put it over here because 630 is not in the thousands place. 480, follow. And 42. Remembering to line up each of those place values into the correct location. I could do this as a very large giant equation. Sorry about that. I could do that. Or, you know, if I wanted to split it in chunks, I could, I could, you know, do these guys first, these guys, add it all up. So at that point, I want you to check your work, see what your answer is. If you got something, I gave you most of the work. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll do another one where you just get to try without me telling you. But you may want to check your addition, see what you got. Okay, I kind of ran out of space for myself here. So I think I can still make this work. Let's see. Zero plus zero plus zero plus two is two. I wouldn't recommend squishing yourself like Mrs. Crito did here. I have enough experience with math that I'm gonna be fine, but set yourself up for success. No, don't, don't smush it like me. Zero plus three plus eight plus four. Remember, we're in the tens place, so these all stand for tens. That would be, let's see, 11, 12, 13, 15 tens. I leave by five. Oh dear. Oh good, it's gonna let me do it. Carry my. 1 over, which is actually 100. 100 plus 200 plus 600 plus 400 gives me, let's see, oh, whoa, that's a big number. 3, 9, 13 hundreds, which is 1,300, actually. Carry this little guy up. 1,000 plus 7,000 is 8. Thousand, ooh, no, sorry. You guys know I'm bad with my drawing tool. Don't forget that comma, 8,352 is my final answer. Mamma mia, that was a lot of math. So hopefully you see all my steps. There were, there were plenty. Remember, I counted the number of digits. I knew I needed a two row box by a two row box. A two by two is what we call it. I knew that because I counted the number of digits. Two digits here, two digits here. Okay. Created a four square box, wrote this guy on the top, put this guy on the left side, split it up into place value parts, multiplied each of those place value parts and added them back together. Now this is where if you are struggling with place value, you're gonna continue to have some trouble because if you don't understand how to expand these numbers out, then you're gonna to wanna to do some extra practice with that, okay? But hopefully, I mean, we, we've been doing expanded forms since at least second grade, so hope, at least, maybe first. Hopefully, y'all know how to do that. If not, that's something that you're gonna to wanna to get on your eye ready and practice, or ask me. I'd love to provide you with more help. All right, here's the next one. You're gonna to wanna to try the strategy with this. I will read it for you three times. Read one. By the way, this is in your book somewhere, but it isn't in a word problem and it's on an old page that I guess we skipped or something. So I just recommend doing this on a whiteboard. Yeah, okay. Here we go. An orchard owner, this is an orchard. Look at all those wonderful apple trees, yum, yum, yum. An orchard owner was counting the number of apples he had in total. All right, well, I already know it's gonna be addition or multiplication. Each of his 55 trees had 68 apples in it. <laughs> Somebody made a typo. Apples is what that is supposed to say. I'm gonna fix that. How many apples did he have in all? Not applies or applies is actually how you would say that. I'm gonna read that a second time. 
I'm a little goofy because it's late and I'm tired. It's actually not that late, but six o'clock feels late. An orchard owner, the guy that owns this orchard, was counting the number of apples he had in total. Okay, that's a lot of counting. Each of his 55 trees had 68 apples in it. So if he were to count this tree as just one tree, then it would have 68 in it. But he's got to count this tree and this tree and this tree. He's got to do it 55 times. How many apples did he have in all? Well, yesterday, we talked, actually it was today, but it will be yesterday when you're watching this. Yesterday, we were talking about how, how do you figure out that something's multiplication? Well, first of all, um, the keyword total says to us that we are looking for a number we don't know, um, um, and that we are adding something together. Multiplication is adding, it is just adding the same number multiple times. So right now I do not know how many I have in all. If you are looking for a total, if you're looking for two separate numbers that you're bringing together, two or more, you should automatically be thinking to yourself, addition or multiplication. Because we are not taking away. We are not separating. So you need to think, okay, it is multiplication or it is addition. If we're looking for total, in all, uh, you know, those are those keywords that should go ding, 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 multiplication or addition. But how do you know if it's one or the other? Well, then you need to say, okay, am I doing the same equation multiple times? Is it the same number repeating? Well, let's find out. It sounds like each tree has 68 apples in it, which in real life, that would never happen. There, it would never be the exact same number in each tree. That would be crazy. But in this problem, there is, it sounds like each of those 55 trees has the same number of apples. Now, if I had, you know, tree A has 30 apples and tree B has 20 apples and tree C has 15 apples, that doesn't sound like multiplication. Those are all different numbers. But if each value is the same, and I am attempting to find a total, it is multiplication, okay? So, it sounds like that's the case, because each tree supposedly has the same amount of apples in it. And I am looking for a total. So, one more time, knowing what I just said, hopefully you know what your equation is. I will read it one more time. This is actually now read three. Each, whoops, started to started on the lower line, my bad. And orchard owner was counting the number of apples he had in total. Each of his 55 trees had 68 apples in it. I'm gonna get all these keywords. Total each 55, 68. How many apples did he have in all? Total in and all are my signal words that tell me it's addition or multiplication. Uh, and I see my numbers here. Also, this indicator word each tends to go with multiplication. Sometimes division too, but we're clearly adding, not taking away. So I already know it's multiplication. So your job now is using this problem on a whiteboard or a notebook. You're going to pause this in a minute and you're going to solve this problem. Okay. Now, I'd actually, because we have a little time, I'd like you to try two strategies if you can. Strategies that I have introduced you to recently are distributive property, are partial products, and our area or box method. Okay, so go ahead and try that out. However, uh, you haven't really learned probably how to do distributive with two numbers this big, so you may want to go partial products on this one. Okay, and obviously the box method is, is pretty pretty much the best strategy for something this large. If you do not know how to do two strategies on this yet, then just do the box method. That is the one I want you to all do for sure. So pause, solve, and when you're ready, come back. Now, yeah, could you just go forward in this video? See the answer? Sure. 
Is that going to help you? Not really. So think about that. Okay. If you're watching this, you should have solved the problem. We're going to go ahead and see what the answer is. Uh, this I said already that your location was a whiteboard. Your possible strategies were these. Yeah, you could have drawn a picture. That would have taken you a while, but you absolutely could have. Let's see what they did. What answer did you get and how did you know you were correct? Well, hopefully one of the ways you can know you're correct is if you do two strategies. If you only do one, you're chancing it, particularly if you don't like look back at it and double check your work. So one way is if you got two and they both match, then you're like, oh. You could also have done an estimation uh, where you estimate to the nearest 10 and round those two numbers, see what that answer was and see if you got close. It's my favorite way. So let's find out what happened. Okay, well, we can't share our strategies because I'm by myself in this room, but you can share your strategy to someone in the room. You can also share it to a toy or a stuffy or yourself. I think that area model is the best for this one. So here's how they did it. 55 and 68 were our two numbers, as we saw, because I highlighted those. 55, 68. I already told you it was multiplication. I told you why. I told you you want to try the area model. So here, here, we, here, we, here, we, here we go. They decided to put 55 on top and 68 on the side. It does not matter which you put where. Remember, commutative property of multiplication says we can swap the factors, and it's the same with these strategies. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter which one you put where. Okay, so if 55 had been on the side, you were not wrong. It, it, it will end up the same. However, what does matter is you don't want to put the 5 over here and the 50 over here. You do want to, and then reverse it. I mean, you want to just... Keep it in the order that the number goes. I don't want you to confuse yourself, okay? So, looks like we've got 50 broken up into 50 and 5 based on its place value parts. 68 was broken up into 60 and 8 based on its place value parts. Then, I am going to go with this number, and I'm going to go across and up, giving me the equation of 50 times 6 or 60 times 50, however you want to do it. Outcome's the same. That would give me 3,000. Remember, if I had ignored those two zeros, it would give me 6 times 5 is 30, and I add two zeros back. That's how you got three zeros there. Still working with 60, going across, looking up, it is 60 times 5, giving me 300. Okay? Finally, I'm now going to focus my energy here on eight, I'm gonna go across and I'm gonna look up, giving me the equation of 50 times eight or eight times 50. When I do that work, it will give me the answer 400 because five times eight or eight times five is 40. I add back my zero here, giving me 400. Finally, going across and looking up again is eight times five, giving me 40. If you are still struggling with this method, I'd recommend watching back my explanation again because I do talk fast. Luckily, you're seeing the visual here, but watch it a couple times because in class, these things go lightning quick, right? And so now is your chance to re-watch, try again. We do have a test on this next week. So now is a good chance for you to go, ah, oh, I can do this a little bit more at my pace, okay? So I was one of those students with math. I needed to hear things like 17 times to grasp it, at least once I got to a certain level of math. So rewatch it. Help yourself, okay? Well, they're curious here about, like, why does the area model have four boxes in it? Well, we talked about that a little bit because we have to break the digits apart. And there are two digits here, and there are two digits here. So that's where the four comes from. 
then why is the product of 60 times 53,000 instead of 300? Well, it's because six times five already has a zero in it. It's 30, right? And then you have to add back both of those other zeros. So we're not done. You have to add each box up. 3,000, 400, 300 plus 40. There they all are in a line. And the final answer is set, or whoops. 3,740, 3,740. Technically, you should say 3,740 apples. A lot of you guys forget your label on tests, and that's a very simple point um, that you can get. I actually give you those points usually even if you get the, the math part wrong. So if you have a word problem, Remember to think about what is it asking you to solve for. And in this case, it was asking to solve for the apples, number of apples in total. So my label is what is the word problem asking. In this case, it was asking about apples, and I am labeling it 3,740 apples. So I make sure that I get full credit. All right. Here's another way you could have done it. We did talk about using partial products for... Uh, a two digit by a two digit yesterday, briefly, very briefly. So what we gotta do here is you basically focus first on your top number and you look at your ones place, okay? I'll do it in the color. Let me see if this gives me a purple. Oh, it does. All right, good. So I'm looking here at this five in my ones. That's where I'm starting. And no matter how large this number is, I'm always going to start on my ones, just like addition and subtraction. And then I need to multiply my top number ones by my bottom number ones, which is where this eight ones times five ones came from. Okay, so that's what you start with. You're just like in that column, the ones column. But then what you want to do is you want to actually go over to this number because you're working with basically like that top number first and sticking in this one's place until you've done every number that's up here. So like this would keep going. Anything up here times this eight ones all the way until it's done. However, there's only two up here. So um, I only have to do two total equations multiplied by this eight because there are only two numbers on the top. So my energy is focused on this eight and then I'm doing anything that's on the top multiplied by that. You do it one at a time. So first I did the five ones by eight ones, but then I'm still here on this eight and I'm gonna go to the next number over at the top, which is actually five tens, right? And this is still eight ones. So you have to multiply that bottom number by both numbers on the top. If there's three, you would do the same thing. Or you do the same thing. You're still sticking there. Okay? So that's where this one came from. Eight ones by five tens. Okay? But after you've multiplied each top number by this first bottom number, the one that's in the ones place, you move over to the next bottom number. And in this case, that next bottom number is six, which is six tenths. I'm gonna highlight that in yellow for you to see. So I move over to my next digit on the bottom. And I have to then multiply that digit by each of the ones on the top again, okay? Because I've already done the eight by both top numbers. Now I have to do the six by both top numbers. So I'm going to look over to my ones again. And I'm going to look, aha, uh -huh, six tens by five ones. Okay? Because you have to break it apart in a similar way that you're breaking it apart when you're doing the box method. It's just in a different way in terms of the format, right? So here it is. That's where the six tens is coming from, this guy on the bottom. And the five ones is that five ones on the top. The same five ones we multiplied up here. We just have to do it again because we're looking at this part of the number. And then I still have to multiply the other top number by my six tens, okay? Because you have to do every number on top. 
by every number on bottom, basically. So I'm looking up, aha, five tens and six tens. All right. It's tricky, I know. It is. This one's a little trickier, so you may want to sit with it. And you can also search videos up for two-digit by two-digit partial product questions. That's what I would do if you're feeling a little confused and you want to see more examples than just mine. Okay, so we've broken it apart in the same way we broke it apart before. Look at these numbers you see. 40, 400, 300, 3,000. Look at this. <gasps> they match because I did the same thing. I just did it in a different way. See, 40, 400, 3,300, same numbers, different format, okay? So you wanna just think about it as I'm multiplying each of these place values by each of the other place value and the other factor. And again, you're adding these up. I do not like that they put this on the bottom. I highly prefer to have the largest number on the top. It's pretty much standard, but it's because of the order they did it in. So it's okay, so long as you're, Place values lined up. And ta-da, there's that same number again. They are out of the they ask you here why are they out of order? It's because of the order we did the equation in. So that's okay. But if it confuses you, you can pretty easily reorder it. Sorry, not great with my drawing tool. You can pretty easily reorder it if you want to to uh, actually write the addition equation if you don't like it being in that order after you do your partial products, okay? So now you've seen a couple more examples with area model. You've seen a couple more with partial products, both being two by twos. And your homework is going to be the same kind of thing. OK, so after this, here's what I'd recommend. You do have homework that you can do, but I want you to finish all the other stuff first. You got to go down the list in order. But if you're wanting additional practice with these, prior to doing your homework. Uh, if you just want practice, that's not just that single problem we just did. What you may wanna do is you could go to page 260 in your book. And uh, number seven is a good one to practice with. Also number eight, number seven and eight on page 260, if you want some extra practice, okay? All right, don't forget to do your homework later. Good luck.